California. Ms. Kim, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I want to thank you and Ranking Member uh, Grijarva for this opportunity to speak before you today in your committee. I represent California's 40th Congressional District, uh, which includes parts of Orange, San Bernardino, and Riverside counties in Southern California. And my district also uh, includes several canyon communities and the Cleveland National Forest Trabuco District. I want to take the opportunity to talk about trail maintenance challenges impacting public lands, that's in my district, and the need to improve public-private coordination on wildfire technology modernization, and finally, my support for the Compacts of Free Association, COFA. In the Cleveland National Forest Tribuco District, the 2018 Holy Jim Fire forced shutdowns across uh, several popular trails, and these trails still remain closed because of the persistent erosion and infrastructure-related concerns. And according to the Tribuco District Forest Service Rangers, there are only three non-fire forest service personnel in the field and seven to eight trail volunteers that actively manage trails across 138,971 acres of Trebuco area. National forests with the most urgent trail and infrastructure maintenance needs must have adequate funding for staffing and resources. Unfortunately, it is not clear how federal land management agencies have prioritized and allocated funding for maintenance activities. This is a key concern for my constituents in the canyon communities. So I was pleased to see the language I requested included in the fiscal year 24 interior appropriations bill to direct the uh, Forest Service to prioritize funding for trails that were shut down by wildfires in the last five years with high visitation um, rates. So I thank the chairman and your staff for working with me and my team on this language and for continuing to work with me on drafting legislation to expedite trail and campground restoration in the national forest system. I also want to bring up another one of my uh, priorities regarding wildfire technology. Federal land management agencies do not have a streamlined process for assessing and deploying innovative wildfire technologies. Meanwhile, there are many private entities uh, who are developing innovative technologies to fight wildfires, but they often lack the means to test their technologies at scale in real time. So in June, I introduced H.R. 4235, Wildfire Technology Demonstration, Evaluation, Modernization, and Optimization, or Wildfire Technology Demo Act. It creates a four-year pilot program that allows private entities developing wildfire technologies to partner with federal land management agencies and test their technologies alongside hazardous fuels mitigation activities and training. Some of these next generation technologies include AI enabled and thermal cameras to track wildfires and virtual reality simulations for firefighting training and upgraded firefighting aircraft. This bill is a win-win for private entities looking to test their equipment and federal land management agencies that are working to deploy the best technologies to help fire responders or first responders address wildfires. So I'm excited that it will be considered in a hearing next month. And Southern California is at the forefront of wildfire technology innovation. And I'm thrilled that Air and Wildland Division Chief, Mr. Jim Topoleski from San Bernardino County uh, Fire Protection District will be testifying at that hearing. Finally, I want to express support for renewing the Compacts of Free Association, the COFA agreement. This COFA agreement with Micronesia and Marshall Islands have already expired at September 30th. These agreements provide economic assistance, certain federal benefits for their citizens, and allow the U.S. to maintain a military presence in these countries. 
but failing to renew those agreements will have devastating consequences on our strategic posture in the Indo-Pacific, given the Chinese Communist Party's malign influence in the Pacific Islands. So Congress must act now to renew these agreements. So I want to thank you, Chairman, and your staff for the opportunity to share some of my priorities. And I look forward to the good work that will continue to come out of this committee and appreciate your partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kim, and thank you for coming to the committee today to testify. And you know, I've had the great pleasure to visit your district, which is, is very unique. You have very high population areas adjacent to very remote canyons that have uh, uh, severe fire threats and high winds, and it creates a, a very serious situation. But uh, to see the innovation, to go up in the helicopter with the local fire authorities and see how different outposts have been constructed on the ridges and how they're innovating technology. And also, when you've got that high of a population close to open space and uh, forested lands, you get a lot of demand for recreation. So. I certainly understand why you want to see those trails restored and why your constituents would want to see that happen. And we we're also working in a very bipartisan manner to get the COFA agreements uh, completed. Uh, we hope to have a markup on the, uh, the COFA agreement next week. We're still, it turns out nearly every committee in Congress has a nexus to the COFA, so we're working with other committees to uh, to get signed off so that we can file that bill and, and have a markup soon. Again, thank you for being here. And uh, we're going to now go to the gentleman from South Dakota, Mr. Johnson. You're recognized for five minutes. Uh,